I was thinking about this when I was uh, reading your book, uh, The Last Ape Standing, that there are, when it comes to different types of animal species, like specifically whales mm -hmm. or, or m most animal species, there's such a wide variety of them, right? Like, like whales and dolphins and sharks mm -hmm. and fish and, and everything else. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, to us, there's, there's no variety. There's basically one basic standard cutout of a human, and there's no evolutionary drift much. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. such a wide gap between us and the next primate. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was pretty much what Last Ape Standing was about. Mm -hmm. uh, from the research that I did, um, over the last seven million years, you know, when the first hominin kind of emerged, uh, there have been, I think now, 29 uh, hominin or human, you know, creatures that evolved. Uh, and at one point, at least five were living simultaneously throughout the planet. Probably a lot more. We just don't know about them because you only find what you find. You know, mm -hmm. there's some fossils are hard to find. But there were Denisovans, there were Neanderthals, there were Homo sapiens, there were Homo erectus. And there were uh, Floriensis. Yeah, the Floriensis. And so, those are those are five that seventy five thousand years ago were, mm -hmm. and we were actually barely surviving. You know, there were only probably a couple of thousand of us because uh, most of Africa had been, you know, uh, decimated. In a, uh, f you know, we don't know if it was a huge volcanic. Eruption or, seventy thousand years ago, seventy seventy five thousand yeah, years, right? You know, so uh, you know the fact that uh, so there were lots of other creatures and they were highly intelligent, you know, um, very very bright and doing just fine. I mean, Neanderthals were around for I don't know, uh, almost four hundred thousand or three hundred thousand years, four hundred thousand years, uh, and they survived three ice ages up in Europe. Whereas we were down in Africa, it was much warmer. So, so why are so that was the essential question of Last Ape Standing? Why are we the only one left? Right. And uh, and essentially, we seem to be slightly more flexible. We're more adaptable. Uh, and the the thinking that I came away with in it was that uh, we're born very young. Yes. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a uh, a trait called neoteny, which means uh, a creature is born young, uh, and it's kind it of takes us forever to be able to survive and 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 take care of ourselves. Right. Most right. animals are born and they they got a couple hours to figure it out. Right. Wildebeest hits the ground, yeah. comes out of the womb, and he's already up and running. You know, a horse, same thing. You know, and uh, that was probably more true of some of these other species, but because of the size of our heads. We couldn't have the baby, you couldn't keep the baby in the mother any longer than nine months. You had to get her, get the baby out, and evolution taught us that nine months was it. Now, when a human baby comes out in nine months, after nine months of gestation, they're helpless. And for the next four years, their brain is growing at an incredible clip. So basically, a lot of what happens in the womb with other animals is happening outside the womb with us. And what that means is your personal experience is being changed by the neurons that are rapidly developing in your brain. So you're not being driven by your genetics. You're being driven by your genetics and your experience. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, if you're hearing music, if you're, you know, being... You know, your parents are really tuned in, If depending on where you're living. A million different things that are going on in your brain whenever you're a year old. And there is an enormous amount of brain cells that are being made at that age. Uh, you know, it's shaping literally you. And that's why we're so unique. Each of mm -hmm. us is not so much like a horse, another horse. Now, horses and dogs and everything are different, but they're not as different as we are. And they're not as smart as we are, and they're not uh, as pliable and creative as we are. And I, again, ironically, because of that, we were able to create these technologies and then build on them and learn from them, create language hmm. and create writing, you know, all things that enable us to build on the past so that we get 
culturally more and more intelligent. Mm -hmm. But why is there such a big gap between us and the next? Well, like, why is there such a big gap between us and the next primate? Like, why why don't we see any sort of like middle ground? And why don't we see apes evolving still, or do we? They they're they're evolving just slow, and we're we're evolving slowly too. But our culture moves rapidly. You mm -hmm. know, um, you know. I think I think the answer to that is for one reason or another, and there are probably multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those other highly intelligent creatures that were around when we were. Mm -hmm. are gone. Uh, they were way more intelligent than your average chimpanzee, you know, but they're gone. Uh, and now, we played a role probably with Denisovans and uh, Neanderthals because we moved into territory where, first of all, they were struggling. There were maybe 100,000 Neanderthals spread from Britain to the Atlas Mountains. You know, that's just not very many people over that broad a a space, and so they they didn't build cultures as rapidly as we did. Uh, we we were just more successful at procreating, and then we built tools that were probably a little better than their tools, and so we just started taking over their territory. Mm. Uh, and it may have been just simply that, and we might have also just mated with them and kind of overrun them, you know, genetically, because uh, you probably have. Uh, uh, Neanderthal genes in you. I have 4%, of, and I think it's 8% of my genes are Neanderthal. Uh, so somebody was mating with somebody mm. somewhere down the road there. And uh, so, you know, for one reason or another, they just got wiped out, you know, by 30,000 years ago. And my guess is probably more like 20,000 years ago, they, the last of them departed. Uh, and the same thing happened with Denisovans, uh, who, who moved more toward Asia. And... Uh, you know, um, the other ones probably just didn't, couldn't survive, you know. Mm. I mean, every species goes extinct. 99% of all species are extinct, uh, you know. Uh, so eventually everyone goes the way of the dinosaur. Do you think the timeline for humans has been linear, like perfectly linear, like it's thought of conventionally, like we started out as apes and we just progressively got better and more technological, or do you think there was any sort of like Recess. Do you think it's possible that there was a more advanced version of us in the past? In the past. Well, the fossil evidence doesn't indicate that yet. You mm -hmm. know, um, we haven't found any, you know, fossils of more advanced creatures. Although, how we would know that is hard because mm -hmm. all you've got left is bone, mm -hmm. uh, and you only get so much DNA. Uh, but from a scientific point of view, I mean, I think there are probably theories about that, but from a scientific point of view, there hasn't been anything found that said, oh, here's a creature that's smarter than we were. Uh, Neanderthals actually had a larger brain than we did, and they may have even had more neurons than we did, hmm. but how they were put together, nobody really knows. They may not have had, they probably didn't have speech that was as complex as ours just mm. because of the way their throats were, but... Um, and that just might have been a fluke. You know, we might have just gotten lucky that we could make the sounds that we make and we were able to use them to communicate. I mean, it's kind of odd when you think about it. I'm sitting here, I'm making noises at you, and you're hearing these noises and somehow you know what they mean. You know, and we just make these noises back and forth. <laughs> you know, when you go out to other countries and you hear somebody speaking a different language, it just yeah. sounds like gibberish. You know, but uh, we're able to do it. It's a, you know, it's a really smart technology. And I don't know if Neanderthals could do that. And if they couldn't, it, you know, it meant that they couldn't communicate as effectively and therefore they couldn't build tools and culture as rapidly. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when they just couldn't survive it.